and transport, transfer it into a cup and you win your cup of coffee. Uh, I would have to learn more about Ethiopian coffee and culture in general. Uh, if you have any questions, I will answer. Uh, Do you want to tell them this is made of Of pot? course, of course. The coffee is about 50% uh, right now getting ready. One of the difficulty of roasting an open okay. air is you don't have much of a regulation of the heat. So that's why she is just moving the beans uh, as fast as she can. The end result will be better. Uh, however, it seems like you know an even roast at this point. In about two, three minutes, she will get it to the point it can be raised. This is our traditional clay pot, and it's made out of clay. Uh, as you can see, it's not that big, so it might not be enough for everyone. <laughs> but, yeah, this is how we use it. These are smaller cups. We don't use a 20 ounce cup. <laughs> yeah. So this is how we share. Uh, usually we'll go through three rounds with the smaller cup. So that about end up being a you know, 12 ounce mm -hmm. cup of coffee. Uh, we use green flowers, you know. Uh, Ethiopia is sitting right up at Ecuador. You know, we do have a good amount of rain, a good amount of sun exposure. It is just a tropical garden. So we have plants. The biodiversity is unbelievable. So every time we go out into the garden and grab, you know, grasses like that or flowers to decorate our ceremony. And scent, which I don't have today because um, it will be probably for some of you, I don't know if you would prefer it. In the future when we do a rework, I will make sure I have it available. But we usually have a charcoal burned outside and you bring it. Once it's done, and you can put scent on it, and it it makes it smoky and smells so good, and it's part of the coffee ceremony as well. And the popcorn plus Ethiopian bread would be served before you have your first cup of coffee, especially in the morning. And it's provided at almost every Ethiopian coffee ceremony. Mm -hmm. A little bit of something to go. With. So, should we pass stuff around now, or do you wait a little? When I'm done roasting and then I'm okay. doing the coffee, we'll do that. So, is it true that the best Ethiopian <coughs> coffee never gets out of Ethiopia? Uh, no, no, no. Actually, come to Vivo. <laughs> <laughs> Ethiopians never get a chance to drink a good cup of coffee. Almost 95% of the good coffee will be exported. So it's actually what I drink. Yeah. Uh, there is a mandatory export by the government because they need a hard currency. That is the biggest and the largest foreign exchange earth. Uh -huh. So for that reason, uh, every farmer who have even the best coffee, it has to go out. So we don't get a chance to do it. In a parvel we will. You be the teacher. In a parvel Show them. But in the cities, you know, we don't get a really good coffee. Uh -huh. Anything sold in, in, in the market is called undergrade. Uh -huh. It's called UG or standards for undergrade. That means it doesn't meet the export the quality standard. I'm spending yeah. the night here. And the truth is, the Ethiopians are paying more to buy a pound of coffee in the capital than we pay here. Yeah, because there is not enough, because almost, a, if we were a rich nation, not only consume what we produce in the country, we might be a net importers of coffee, because we are a coffee drinker. Uh, if you go to Colombia or Mexico, you know, their consumption rate is very little. We drink, you know, as much as we produce. Even if we were rich and, you know, afforded, we could have even import other countries <laughs> But, you know, it is an affordable luxury, so we cannot afford it. Are there uh, beans from other areas of the, the world that you enjoy or that you 
Of course, of course. Uh, every region has, you know, uh, a different type of coffee. Uh, yeah. Would you consider this light rose, dark rose, medium, I think? This one is a medium. Medium? Oh. Yeah. Let's do it. So like in the, at the roastery in Kansas City, it's on a large scale roasting operation. What is the difference, you, you know, how they're roasting the mass quantities of coffee versus a more personal way like this? I don't know uh, what their intention is. When you are roasting coffee for a home consumption, it's completely different. When you do it for a commercial reason, it's also different. Mm -hmm. well, so, but, you, but have the people have may not know that he roasts their coffee at their coffee shop. Mm -hmm. So maybe you could talk a little bit about mm -hmm. the difference between that process and this process. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, there is quite a difference. These are in you know, a few fields. When we roast in our roasting ground, it is a commercial machine. It is a lot more pound goes into, into the roasting truck. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot more control on the roasting process because we can regulate the heat, you know. Mm -hmm. We have so many things that we can apply in the roasting okay. process. From economic point of view... Uh, so I have to call it the introduction. Yeah, this is, this is part of the culture. We do this. And then we usually pass it on to people to do it when it's hot, or I can put it on the plate for everybody to smell it, but it's part of the culture where we do this as well, and then just make everybody smell the coffee. I can, you know, yeah, I can. But, sure, I have to make it. I have to be careful, it's hot. Yeah. <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. Let's see the condition of the roast. Oh, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is a real chocolate. There you are.